marketability for those titles because Chris Jericho should be an overwhelming favorite to win the Intercontinental or the United States Championships. Same as Edge and same as Triple H who once who held that championship before after being a WWE champion the year before. So I think what they need to do is a make the titles make the titles in, Make those titles seem very important and the division important. Build the mid-card division with top guys who can go and who can work. Top guys for that division. Not top guys in general, but top guys for that division. Um, a guy like a Kofi Kingston who's been a mid-card MVP. Um, the, the, the assortment of guys in the WWE and make these guys mid-carders and make them have a progression to main event status. Um, for a guy, for TNA... Uh, it's, it, TNA just really needs to have a clean slate of everything because at the moment we don't know who's who, what's what. It's just a complete, you know, hodgepodge of guys, like I said before, who hold some form of a championship or, you know, guys who have been switched from mid card status to low card status to top status for so many times that it's. It's it's too interchangeable. You can't make these divisions too interchangeable, and you can't make rely on these championships being a quick fix for a guy who really probably isn't developed yet. And we've seen that too in the past. Sheamus is a great example of a guy who probably should have been the Intercontinental Champion or U.S. Champion before he became the WWE Champion. Um, but that's pretty much it. Thanks for listening to this edition of Spec Commentaries of Where Have You Gone Mid Card. Just dwell on what I've said, and if you have any comments or questions, don't hesitate to respond. Until um, next time, I'm out, and have a great week. Peace and peep This is and Spec again, bets. and this is going to be sort of like an overtime edition. It's not going to go real long, but it's and there's some more stuff that I'm going to um, – discuss in regards to this third volume of spec commentaries in the mid card it won't take long but there's a couple of things that i left out and i really would like to add to it and i think it should be added and the first is um something that's really been on my mind a lot in terms of the mid card and it has to do with the abundance of talent in the mid card division and pushing that specific core of talent to make that division look credible and I'm not going to dwell into TNA anymore in the, into this specific topic because, as I said before, TNA is just, they, they really don't have a mid card and they really don't even have a, a main event. They don't even have a low card. They really just have a tag team division. And everything else to, in terms of their singles wrestlers is just a hodgepodge of guys that are mixed up and very interchangeable. And, and I've said this before, I don't think your divisions should be interchangeable. I think you should know who is who, what is what, and how these guys are going to progress to what they're going to progress. Um, and so that's why I'm going to stick with WWE here. In WWE's case, as I said, you got a guy like, you have an assortment of talent on the Ross side who aren't basically Mitt Carters, but this just doesn't seem to be a division taken very seriously by the WWE, the Mitt Card division that I'm talking about. You know, a guy like R-Truth, a guy like, you know, John Morrison, um, Daniel Bryan, and Brian, da Brian Danielson, the Miz, who's the current U.S. champion, um, Evan Bourne, who has just been dazzling everybody with his work rate. You know, Mark Henry, you can even add him to the discussion. There's several guys in the WWE who could be positioned as mint cards, but it doesn't seem like the WWE is valuing that specific division. You gotta make this division, mint card division, look credible. Make it look like something that they're going after. Make number one contenders. You don't even have to do, even do that as much as have these guys cut promos and saying how much they want to be the US, heavy, U.S. champion in the WWE. I just don't think that there's a lot of emphasis placed on the importance of that championship as it should be. You look at SmackDown, I don't think you have the same core kind of talent but you do have talent nonetheless with a guy like Drew McIntyre who's just finished being the Intercontinental Champion although they put the belt on him way too soon in my opinion before really building his character up um, you got Matt Hardy um, you know MVP who seems to be, be floundering all over the place in the WWE lately um, and you once think this guy was going to be a world's champion and he was really in my opinion the, the, the best United States Champion in the last at least the last four or five years in the company. But you, my point is, you have guys who could be a part of these divisions, these, this mid-card, and it just seems absent the mid-card division in both brands. And the WWE could and should be doing a lot better job in that regard, 
but they really have it. And in order to make the belt credible, you have to make the division credible. And I think that's where I'm hitting at. If the mid-card division is ever going to come back to form like it once was in the WWE for many, many decades, and as well as um, really around the, in professional wrestling, you have to make your mid-card championship credible. And the way you do that is to make your division, make it a division, um, the mid-card division credible. Make sure you build your division with good talent. Build them over and let them put over the championship without actually having to wrestle for it. Well, what I'm trying to say is, don't. It doesn't necessarily have to be physical, but it could be very verbal. All you have to do is just have them cut promos and talk about how important these divisions and the championships are. And if you do that, maybe maybe down the line the championships will start meaning more. And also, it builds credibility for your world title because they're going after that championship. When they get it, don't want to go after the world title. So that's pretty much it. Thanks, guys, for hanging there, hanging in there with me on this third volume of Spec Commentaries, um, the Overtime Edition. And um, have a good one. And I can't wait. And I'm really, really eager for the fourth edition to come through. And I'll um, keep you up to date about when that's going to happen. Um, have a good one, folks. And see you next time.